there'll be more of us. That'll be cool. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We'll be good. But thank you for at least joining us. Of course. Thank you for having us. Yeah. Part of the mission group celebration. Sharing. Um, well, I was going to do introductions, but I know you guys. Well, we also have our YouTube viewers out there. This Hello. is true. This is true. Hey, everybody out there in Cyberland. Yeah, there's more people out there in the Cyberland, like you were saying. So. I suppose um, if you'd like to share anything about yourselves to any of the members online. <laughs> um, I'm Alice. Hey, Alice. Hey, Alice. Uh, and I'm a witch. All right, thank you. You're in the appropriate location. That's excellent. What about you? I'm Hunter, and I'm also a witch. Beautiful. Great. We're off to a great start. So, I'm Andrews. Uh, I started this whole shebang in 2020 during the pandemic. Um, I'm sure I didn't touch on this, you know, when uh, the last couple of videos, you know, but now that there's been a couple out, third one's coming out now, so once we upload this one, so yes, Church of Witchcraft, we've been around since 2020. Hello! Hi. Wait, I'm sorry. That's not a problem. We're just doing introductions. Uh, yeah, so like I said, Church of Witchcraft started in 2020, and I've just been playing away at that, you know, for the last couple of years, and bringing people on board, and starting to do more of these conversations, that it wasn't enough of them happening. Um, yeah, so I'm the head of the church, but I just call me Andrews, it's fine. I'm Joe. I, uh, I've been practicing for quite some time in various different fashions and <laughs> aspects of my life. It keep, keeps going and coming back in, in its own way. And we happen to have met each other on a Facebook group in Chatham. Was that Facebook? Probably. You were better member. There was a. Uh, I think Facebook was on some kind of like a banning uh, oh, that's strike, right. and yeah. he reached out asking if I had experienced the same thing because I was starting to get more active in the Colorado Pagans group, mm -hmm. and that was our original conversation. And then maybe six months later was when we had touched base again for the church. Right, right, right. Yeah. And then in 20, what year is this, 21? In 22. Whew! Yeah. <laughs> Time, Time travel. <laughs> So in 21, <laughs> Joe came on board with uh, Marisha. You can see us on the website too. So. Yourself, please. Uh, I go by Ghost in uh, Phantasma and Ghost Kitty on the Discord. Oh, beautiful. Okay. And oh. Hi. Nice to meet you in person. Right. Day. Yes. Uh, so, what was the question? Like how long? Just, just an introduction. Like who you are? How are you? Yeah. Uh, so I'm. 32 now, and I've been practicing seriously for about five years. Okay. Um, so my grandmother was like a white witch, Buddhist witch, so I've been following that until I kind of figure out what my real label is. So working with angels and bodhisattvas and okay. stuff, I still don't feel very like knowledgeable yet. Like I feel like I have a lot to learn. Um, we all do, so, always. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I should immediately, anybody who's helping run the church, if we, some, one of us goes, well, oh, I think we've learned everything, they should just be immediately released. They should just be like, but you're, you're, you're just terminated. Cool. Like, you don't need to be here anymore. You're constantly learning. Because mm -hmm. there's just so much. So much. It's the gift that keeps on giving. And that's what I love about it. Yeah. That's, uh, uh, I don't want to get like too personal or anything, but I was in a coven, and that didn't work out. So I've been doing this hardcore solitary path, and I feel like, I have been really busy and been able to get a lot done, so I've been like, wow, am I a solitary witch? I don't know. So I'm still figuring out all these questions. Uh, I remember meditating in like in nature when I was really young and feeling like this is what I should be doing, but I didn't really understand it until now. So um, I practiced on and off before, and I was part of a Buddhist organization, and I was actually a, a pretty well-known leader in that organization. Right. So. Welcome. That's over, so now I'm interested in the church of the Excellent. Well, thank you for being here, being supportive. It's good to see your posts and things in the Discord, too. Yeah, I think you might be right for the camera. Oh, sorry. It's okay. okay. It's your turn, though. You it's your turn. Yeah. Well, for an introduction. Yeah. Who are you? Uh, How are you? I'm Adriana. Nice to meet you guys. Hello. Hello. 
I was expecting it to be bigger, not gonna lie. I, I was expecting it to be full. Yeah, it's eventually. Eventually. Yeah. It That's, the dream. That's the dream. Yeah. And the really good thing is, is that generally speaking, we end up when we're finding guidelines that the other so I'm from Colorado Springs, so I drove up here to support wow. our Joe here. Um, what I find is that we're getting a lot of new faces, even if it's a small number, there's a, each time there's new faces, and I'm like, that's great. Yeah. Now let's just keep them coming. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. Do you guys do this often? This is the first one in Denver. Mm -hmm. So we'll be doing once a month in Denver. Every month we'll continue this whole the whole Ooh. thing and we'll make it consistent. Nice. Very nice. And what brings you? Um well. So, like, I've been interested um, in witchcraft for a long time, um, and I try to get into it, but it's just very time-consuming trying to learn everything, right? Mm -hmm. um, and it's hard for me to um, dedicate, or that's not the right word. Um, that works. Prioritize. Right, and uh, stay focused, right? And so I came here because I want to learn more, but also I want to learn, I mean, meet more people mm -hmm. to help me learn, so if they're doing. willing, you know? Of course, yeah. Um, but yeah, that's why I'm here. Welcome. Thank you, guys. Is that working? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, that's what we're here for. One of the biggest things that I realized early on was the first year I tried to gather covens together, very long story, but we tried to gather cabins together, and there just wasn't enough education out there. Right. And I realized that what we need to start with is talking to people and yeah. talking to them about why we're doing what we're doing, whatever that form of witchcraft is. We don't. We are just one way, not the way. Right. So we try to, you know, we're basically jumped up library into the pension for magic, mostly. I mean, under the guise of a church. <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, we also have you seen that we had a Discord and all that stuff. I see that on Facebook, and um, mm -hmm. you, you guys remember Witchbox? Yes. Yeah. So that's how I used to look for covens, but um, they they uh, have no longer have their site, right. or I don't think so. Yeah. There's also a lot of uh, chatter on uh, Amino. Is uh, a yeah. what's that? It's a, yeah. a, a almost like a chat room type. Mm -hmm. Oh wow. Sisters. Kind of. Yeah. It's like oh. Reddit on speed. Yeah. Oh, I like Reddit. Yeah, so that's, so that was a, one that kind of almost, not like re replaced or replicated. Uh, oh, okay. But it was okay. a good st substitute when that came out. Okay. I'm definitely going to get the Discord, though. Cool. Sure. Yeah. We'll love to see you there. That'd be great. Or read what you have. We awesome. post all sorts of things there. And it's very fresh and growing all the time. Cool. Hope to have a very thriving. Thousands and thousands of people in the community on Discord eventually. Unmanageable. That's how how many people we want. We want it to be unmanageable. <laughs> Fantastic. So as far as today goes, um, the topic is kind of the perception of witchcraft, um, and I kind of wanted to hear maybe some ideas of what some of you might think of when people are discussing witches, as far as what maybe has the media portrayed, any movies, music, anything that has to do with witchcraft that kind of sparks your mind in that way and how that's affected you over the years? That's a broad question. Yeah, maybe narrow it <laughs> slightly. <laughs> slightly. So in, in the media, uh, oftentimes we get different views of witches and witchcraft from Escaped Witch Mountain, back in the Disney days to uh, views that they did witches that had a different flavor of witchcraft where they were trying to take the kids' souls to uh, Halloween Town or Hocus Pocus, yeah. right? And then even those, both for a children's genre, has one that kind of portrayed witches as a negative, trying to harm, as comedic as it is, or one that is a familial aspect that's trying to save the town from the witches on awry. I'm tired of the pentagram being saying that it's devil worshiping. I'm so sick. Mm -hmm. Right. And I think that's like Ghost Adventures' fault because they feed into that, probably. <laughs> Any familiarity with the satanic panic? 
Yeah, it sounds familiar. Quite. Satanic Panic was back in the late 80s, early 90s, where, you know, it was just like anything that was a cult was immediately, devil worship, we're going to freak out. But it was all the same thing with like the rockers, like yeah, Ozzy Osbourne, and music. like the, all the metal genre. That whole thing was like down with the, you know, there was all the parents freaking out because that had to do with the occult. And, it was just misunderstood and misrepresented because they were selling albums. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they used icon iconography that was really effective to sell albums. Oh, yeah. And then it got this kind of association, and then it got the news, and then there was death. it went off, off real. And only until recently, really, when we started getting into the 21st century, then we started seeing. I started seeing that there was more open acceptance of that, and like the time was, it was time to have a narrative, you know, to address that. What other representations might you guys think of, um, other than in media or music or? Um, I think of a lot of like horror movies, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like uh, movies that are similar to The Conjuring and things like that, where people kind of paint these pictures and these practices as like evil and it's going to like destroy homes and families and all this kind of stuff. And really, the people coming in to solve the problems, they're essentially doing the same thing in a different. I'm just calling it Christian Well, not always necessarily that, but it's just it's just Well a lot of a lot of horror movies are very based on God will save me, the light will save me, or the Christian God will save me and all of that from the demons of the devil and all of this. Mm -hmm. But it's just like like Spice. lots of like people are like, Oh you're going to hell I'm like I don't believe that. Like <laughs> like lots of people like push these beliefs, especially in, in, in horror movies like that, where it's just like, it's so based on Christianity or Catholicism. It's just like, no, that's the, like, I don't, I don't personally believe in that myself. So like, why, it, it's true because you believe it. So it's always kind of like having that conversation. It's like, it's, Christ, Christians are always the good guy and devil worshippers and pagans are always the, the bad guy. Yeah, we never really lost the sociology of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, no, I, I took a horror filmmaking class, so I'm like... Gotcha. <laughs> I know. And in recent years, I've probably met almost as many Christian witches as I have pagan witches. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or well, here's one that'll melt your mind. An atheist witch. What? <laughs> yeah. How could that be possible? Or a mystic atheist? That's a wacky one, too. And there's a really... There's a lot of basis for that, you know, the Christianity, like, good versus evil, mm -hmm. I mean, all the things you see in horror media, that sort of thing, there's always a duality, mm -hmm. there's this internal this or that, one and zero, binary sort yeah. of thinking. Um, I, yeah, I think the whole good and evil, like, just that as a concept is kind of wrong, because, I mean, if you look at nature, like, there are predatory animals, and there are prey animals, and, like, you think the predatory animal should just starve because it's violent, you know what I mean? Or it's a dark or it's scary or makes people uncomfortable. Right, it's gotta eat like, yeah. It's just, just like doing what it has to do to survive. I think instead of good and evil, there's just this side and this side, and they can do different things and they work in tandem together. And a lot of stuff in between too. Right. Yeah. They I think what Shakespeare had said once uh, there is no good or evil that thinks the king makes itself. Mm. That's kind of all a Durkheim, uh, Durkheim behaviorists, you know, early stuff when he was talking about the things that make the what makes something sacred or religious is the human behavior around it. So you know, if you have two rocks that are ostensibly visually the same, and one's more sacred than the other, the only reason one's more sacred than the other is because a bunch of humans went that rock is a holy rock. Definitely. Mm -hmm. But that one is not a holy rock. And the only thing that makes that sanctified is human behavior. Mm -hmm. yeah. The will of manifestation. We see that in witchcraft all the time. We are defining something by what it is. We're going, that is holy. That is like, why do I have an obsidian crystal, for example? Right? I align with that thing, and that thing has importance. I have went gravitas to that in my intention, just like any way it's going to manifest. I think in the media, I think about Charles Manson and Death to All Pigs yeah. through the pentagram. So I'm trying to think, like, when did it start that the pentagram became negative? Uh, I think so. Folks 
might not be aware, but the pentagram was also used by the early church. It was one of the mm -hmm. first yeah. Christian symbols symbolizing the five wounds of Christ mm -hmm. and also the idea of the Holy Spirit descending on man when it's inverted. So both tip up and tip down were both used in different forms for basically Christianity. When they had switched to the cross in like 2321 and 22, it was just before the Council of Nicaea, they probably had to demonize the old symbol in order to make the new symbol better. Or it has, yeah. And I mean, it was always pre predated Christianity, obviously. But once Christianity accepted it, then they had to, once they replaced the symbol again, like I said, make it bad. Okay, that's, that's those people. That's yeah. the other group, or the former church, or the old you know, group, or the, they said, whatever have you. Right. Is it attached to the Solomon magic? Solomon magic, magic uses a lot of that. Okay. A lot of divine numbers and numerology, a lot of ceremonial magic goes into Solomonic magic. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of that. So basically, the media that has a lot of influence then on society's perception of witchcraft. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that then by segue, how they view us, right? Mm -hmm. When we introduce ourselves, or when someone, when we get to that point in conversation with someone, and then we might have a pause, oh, you're a witch, mm -hmm. oh, okay, um, but you're so nice. <laughs> yeah. Right? Think, but you're I a great think, person. But, but yeah. Oh, I was going to say, I think my favorite representation in media of witchcraft were like, uh, the Gretel and Hansel film, you know, <laughs> that the, the reason to me. Um, at the end of it, so basically, like the main character went through this whole like thing where she was learning from a witch who was dark, and kind of learned all that, and then defeated her in the end, and then came out. And she was into like less like painful things and stuff like that. And like we all have power. It's about how you use it and your choice and what you're going to do with that. So I mean, like I don't know. It kind of kind of adds that oh well. They're not all bad. Some people, it's just their heart's in a different place. And they do things there. And that goes with anything. Like, yeah. In any sort of religion, there's always probably going to be a really, really negative side. And then there's people that actually do the good. You know? There was a weird study done, I think it was at uh, University of Seattle, like somewhere in Washington, where they were studying uh, turtles. And the I forget the, the ultimate aspect of how to how turtles navigate roads in order to figure out how to better build like those uh, uh, plant roads and stuff to help animals get across yeah. and something like that. And the person doing the study came to a really horrifying conclusion after a few months that five percent of the population will swerve out of their way to run over a turtle. Hmm. Okay. Wow. Just there's five percent of people that are just that kind of horrible mentality that's just like, I will swerve out of my way to try to run something over, just us. The P of the uh, the P of the V, the call of the void. Yeah, try not to try not to activate those things. <laughs> Driving down the road, you I was. Well, that would be more self self judging. Right. Hitting yourself rather than hitting the turtle, but right. yeah. So I mean, on that premise that. No matter what the, the group is, there's going to be five percent of people that are just horrible. <laughs> you know, so um, even though even if you find a group that's predominantly better people, you're still going to have the chance of five percent of them being off. Mm -hmm. um, but that also then goes into the uh, the next point that I had is that many people don't realize just because of the way that we term uh, use terminology and words. I uh, raise a lot of animals. Micro zoo, over 100 uh, different kinds of lizards and uh, snakes and tarantulas and stuff. And so we really focus on the binomial nomenclature because it's very specific to each species and genus of animal uh, compared to what we call things, because what we call things might be uh, different than what they are. Almost like uh, the terminologies of like vegetable or tree isn't a real word, it's kind of what we call things, but it's like, uh, what kind of Tree species is a specific type of, you know, or a fish is a. But another one that's interesting is that we have uh, pigeons throughout the world. And we also have 
dubs that we save especially for weddings and magic shows and ceremonies because of how people view them as pure and inspiring, what have you. But both species are part of the same bird grouping, um, which is escaping me at this very moment. <laughs> but it's basically the same bird. It's off by a gene uh, of coloration and a gene of uh, a speciation, but it's, uh, it's still the same, the same general bird type, and people view them so drastically. Oh, that's a you know, dirty uh, air rat, it's a pigeon, it's a filth, it's whatever. We have these beautiful doves, but it's the same bird. It's just off by a gene or so. Mm -hmm. And so, in the same manner, it's not just what society might inflict upon us, but it's kind of up to us to say, okay, well, how am I going to try to inflict what I want the world to perceive me as? Can I, you know, move or change or speak or dress or act differently in order to have this perception be differently? Can I have some folks view me as a dev and some folks view me as a vision? Is that a possibility? How does that affect or change things? Mm -hmm. uh, and really, in all of our perceptions, how we want to carry ourselves, right? We have these media representations and that are generally negatively slanted. I mean, if you look at the current war that's going on, I'm not going to call that a conflict. I've already made that point. But what we see a lot, what I'm watching, and what I'm seeing a lot of that is all the witches are coming out of the woodwork and cursing. I'm not going to specify which one, but you probably have a general idea. But what we see is these witches coming out of the woodwork to do a bunch of cursing, and that's the view that exists in media, yeah. worldwide. And so why isn't it also they aren't doing blessings? Why aren't they also representing themselves in that way? And that's our decision, right, as a community. Mm -hmm. It's not our decision, it's the community's decision of how they want to have themselves perceived. Witches were initially healers. You know, had sages and they lived on the outskirts mm -hmm. of towns and whatever, and they would have herbs to and salves, you know, for sunburns and rashes and that sort of thing, and it was this mystical knowledge, and they were healers, right? And you bless it to the, to a different idea than could be originally thought. Like rather than just saying, Okay, well, in my viewpoint of the situation, I want this side to come out better, and so I'm gonna bless this side, curse this side. So you're bringing a blessing, but you can also bless the side that you're against. Yeah. I want them to have better thoughts. I want them to internally point. grow yeah. and be better and realize, hey, maybe these orders I'm getting are wrong. Maybe the person that's in charge is an a-hole. Maybe, you know, whatever have you in that aspect. And send love and kindness to that direction rather than just the side that you want to win. And you don't have to fit into the role that's been, you know, thrust upon this particular thing. Declaring oneself as a witch means to take on some of this baggage and address some of these things and be aware that that's what's occurring. I tend to think of witch as a vocation, but that's a whole other discussion. Mm -hmm. um, but absent the societal representation that we see of this sort of negative slant, we don't have to do that. We can go back to those origin points of how do we help the community? How do we make the community thrive? And those, that's part of this conversation. That was my approach to that, so I brought him in, and then I looped these two in, and so I'm trying to get all these people to address how does this community to start talking, right? It doesn't need to be just in the liminal spaces where most, where I would say that witchcraft derives its magic from, I suppose you could call that. Um, but yeah, those societal representations aren't something we don't have to take on that mantle, right? We just have to be aware and respect the fact that it is going to come with set of baggage, and then how are we going to address that? We can also kind of paint a picture of ourselves, as you were saying, by how we react to you know, how people perceive us. Like, well, that's what people like said, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's largely what we're trying to do is it, that education piece. And yeah. really, not just this is what all witches do, this is the realm of what some of these people do, and there's a whole different bunch of iterations, but even having that conversation, you know, the difference between yeah. Satanist and devil worshippers and Luciferians are all different. Yeah. They're not all the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's good to kind of like demystify that for like the general populace so that it's not as like taboo of a thing, you know, it's just kind of like, oh, yeah, maybe this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. Um, you know, we need to mind that our 
the social, the societal representation does shape people's behavior towards us, um, which, and it's towards which is, and towards any fringe group, right? And again, it's just reminding, accepting and knowing, it's like that is what we're gonna encounter, right? I had a uh, Manitou story the, from the lady that I met. So I was down in Manitou Springs, so I was walking around, me and me, and this lady comes up, and she's like, oh my god, you look like somebody famous, you look some, are you somebody I should know? And I was just like, well, I'm the head of the Church of Witchcraft. She recoils in horror. And she stops, and she says, well, I'm a Christian. I'm like, that's great. I'm glad you have a path to divinity. And she was kind of like, wait, what? So, you know, if somebody asks you if you're a witch, please don't hiss at them and scream something in Latin and run away. That doesn't help us. That makes everybody really uncomfortable, and it looks really bizarre. So this lady expected me to do something outrageous, right? And instead, I appreciated what she had in respect to that. And she talked to me a little bit about that. And it was more, and that was some of my first families. I'm like, oh, right. If I'm going to wear, you know, a pentacle in the open, if I'm going to wander around and be like, yeah, I do witchcraft, these are the conversations I'm going to have to have. And even when you're trying to help people, there's a homeless person sitting outside of King Supers. I went in and bought them food, and I said, this is from the Church of Witchcraft. He said, well, I'm Christian. And I was just like, that's great. That has nothing to do with this. We are here to provide this for you. Do what you will with this. We're not trying to convert you. We're just here to be part of the community, whatever that might look like. And so you get to choose what that is. I would prefer and I would recommend that people be a little more constructive and a little bit less, you know, outlandish in their responses <laughs> to others that have altered. Too much. Too right. much of humanity. <laughs> right? Firebrand has certain spots to Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, didn't they ban like uh, tarot off of TikTok and Instagram? Oh yeah, we have feelings about that that are <laughs> not necessarily for polite company. Yeah, <laughs> I've been getting lots of DMs of people being like, "Do you need a reading? Do you need a reading?" And I just don't answer because I'm just like, I can be reading my thoughts. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So they pour they have a lot more word restrictions. There's so like, like a thirty-some odd item list. I almost do it times. Oh yeah. And that's that's a, even odd, just like um, the cross is I'm even talking like words like community are being flagged because they're trying to keep people from moving. Yeah. But, but is it yeah, then we can kind of see why we're moving on to Discord because A, it's <laughs> like being banned or restricted because yeah. we're being specifically originally, I mean, initially it started as us being singled out and that this whole community, not just yeah. us, but just witches yeah. in general, that's part of the reason why we can't make events, I suspect. Because I have no flags on my on our account. Church of Witchcraft has nothing on Facebook, would not violate any safety standards, nobody's made any complaints you about us. We, it just says you can't make events at this time. And they didn't say why? Nope. They won't respond to emails. I can't get anything. Right. And so I was like, well, guess I'm done here. Right. Yeah. Sounds, sounds about right. This part's a lot more fun anyway. Yeah. Super yeah. sus. So that's what we're there. Yeah. Interactive and stuff. So the main social Instagram and Facebook will be more for just like hosting um, general stuff about, you know, the, we'll make posts about events. So we can't make events on the page. And then mm -hmm. everything else will be repeated on Discord and shared on Discord. Mm -hmm. We we'll actually try to have things that are um, even live feed and various. Yeah. I do have a suggestion. Would you guys ever be open up to doing like a debate with other religions? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Uh, more specifically, I did consider there being a debate forum, but really I wanted there to be more of a compare and contrast instead mm -hmm. of a debate. Yeah. So that we would bring other, and I've talked to a couple of other religious leaders, I guess, in various churches have just been like, hey, if we like put something together, can you just you want to come to the table and just be like, oh, this is how you found divinity. This is how we did. Yeah. How odd, right? As long as it stays respectful. Like yeah. that's otherwise it, if it just devolves, then there's no point in us doing it. <laughs> you know, then we're not getting anything that we're just trying to shout over one another and that doesn't help, right? But certainly that is on the dock, there's a lot of things on the dock. <laughs> but there are there's not a there's not an enormous staff, so we're working on it. We're, we're taking things bit by bit, you know. Um, really pushing into the community thing, knowing that we have the limitations of Facebook and that sort of thing. It's like, well, how are we going to address that? What, what is the next thing that we need to do? How do we get this education out there? So, that's why we're here. TikTok seems to be the, the most popular thing right now, even though I don't like it. Um, but that seems to be where everyone is gravitated to. Mm -hmm. If there's a, a 
um, how do we put out the list of things that we can't say? And if there's ways of saying around it, then maybe we can well, try to like like spell things address that. Nowadays exactly. So like, I'm sure we, we can figure out ways of doing that, or just have it in the subtitle yeah. or not said or something. Because I'd love to have some of these talks, you know, some some of the things that we say put down oh, into like five ten minutes or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, we hadn't asked, uh, we're jumping around a little bit, how does the representation uh, change based on perception? And also, does pop culture representation uh, reflect contemporary witches? Totally. Yeah. I can reiterate those. Uh, let's start with that first one. Does the pop culture representation reflect contemporary witches? Define contemporary witches. Uh, in the last, I'll say 30 years, so 90 to present. Okay. Wait, what was that? <laughs> Basically, it, does the pop culture and the media, does it act, accurately portray which is over the last 30 years? I feel like, like obviously the media is going to be way over the top of the media because they have to be for yeah. entertainment various other purposes, but like, I don't know, I've never seen anything like I do ever, like portrayed in media, mm -hmm. and I think it's just the very, very basic stereotype of contemporary witches mm -hmm. probably fits that bill a little more, but like, I don't think they realize how broad witchcraft actually is. It's and how very, deep. Very yeah. first year Wiccan. Yeah. Very first year Wiccan stuff on yeah. <laughs> a lot of the... And all these I can touch on that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. That plug and play witchcraft type stuff is what's being represented, I feel like. Yeah, even if her friends call the directions and then chant a couple times and then a couple candles and add nausea for the next 19 movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other thoughts on the portrayal of the media in witchcraft? I feel like practical magic uh, does a pretty good job, mm -hmm. and Sabrina kind of does that misinformation thing with Hecate and the Triple Goddess. Oh, man, that got, that was a mess. Loved yeah. it. It was a mess. Oh, I love it, too, but I'm just so no, confused. They demonize pagans. That, that baffled me. That's, I was like, well, wait, 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 where are we? What, right? what team are we playing for? Because right. we're in the same team. Yeah, at the end of the day, a lot of this stuff is just energy. Right. Well, yeah, that's, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. It's just yeah. Plus, they also have to all. that they're trying to sell views, and so they have to appease the largest group of audience. Yeah. So how, can we, yeah. how can we be edgy enough with this topic that's taboo mm -hmm. without pissing off the person that we're broadcasting to? Yeah. Since we are the audience minority, we have to make sure that we yeah. don't upset the larger groups. Since they pay the bills, and they will be advertising, and, you know, and then you also have to figure out the advertisers, the advertisers get to pick which shows that they're on, so then you have to figure out which advertisers are okay or willing to be associated yeah. with a show without said subject. Right. But there's also Harry Potter. Right. I'll so touch like, on that, I too. I've been canceled like crazy. Yeah. I threw away all of my Harry Potter stuff. Did you have any thoughts as well? Um, well, I think that all the like witch shows that I watch or movies, I think they portray everything pretty cool. It like makes me want to do it even more. I don't know. Okay. okay. I don't know. That's just my thought. No, that's yeah. that's good to know. It's uh, like um, I see something and I'm like, oh god, I wish I could do that. I want to get into that. You know? Um, it does look like it's like fun to watch. Right. And, like, it's fun. It's cool. Yeah. In modern portrayal, the majority of what's being portrayed is Sabotic witchcraft, primarily colonized witchcraft from mm -hmm. basically all of what Europe is, which borrows heavily from Norse German pagan stuff, as well as Grecian and Egyptian theology. That aside, most of what we have, and this also includes Llewellyn as one of the biggest publishers, did great things, simultaneously terrible, but they really whitewashed a lot of this, that witchcraft came from that region, and it's like, whoa, there, there's a whole bunch of problems with this. Yeah. So in the reflection in media itself that we have, that we see, most of it's just Sabotic witchcraft, and it's that same kind of play, you know, the Directions and the Guardians and so on and so forth, and, you know, Wicked 101, essentially. Uh, and I will say this ad nauseum, all Wiccans are witches, not all witches are Wiccan. Mm -hmm. Nor are all witches 
predominantly white because the Yoruba tribe, there was a huge segment of that. You're talking about oceanic stuff, you're talking about indigenous people practices. What about the Chinese? What about Japanese Shintoism? On and endlessly, endlessly on. Llewellyn doesn't touch on those things. They sell to the most of the common denominator, right? There are some sources that are touching on those things, but modern portrayal is really like that initial European sort of thing. And decolonizing witchcraft specifically is a super important thing. And that's one of the things we try to do is Vincent's garden was so interesting. <laughs> it yeah. really spread Wicca pretty far. And the biggest names. Yeah. What is Sabotic? Sabotic, oh, how would you describe that in succinct form? <laughs> Uh, let's call that following, I guess you could call that Gardnerian almost. Okay. Right, because so he's based it so... Gerald Gardner is the guy that invented Wicca, or started Wicca. The um, Church and School of Wicca. Based off of his uh, personal practice of magic. Gerald Gardner was in England and started his interviews based off of his studies and what he wanted, which got to be portrayed. Um, and so... Was it him and Dean? John Dean. I don't remember exactly. Um, and so a lot of the premise was based off of specifically the farming calendar, which is the the Sabbath, the uh, eight uh, holidays throughout the year, which coincide with when you're supposed to harvest plant, and so uh, as well as a lot of the renewal energies of the uh, forest type. Which doesn't really track because nobody had eight sabots. That doesn't make sense because of a lot of different reasons, for so many reasons. Gerald Gardner put together eight sabots that generally followed most harvest practices from a variety of different sources and borrowed from them liberally and then stuck them all together and now we have the eight sabots, right? And I don't practice, I, you know, I don't really follow the sabots myself. We support people who do because a lot of people do. A lot of people it matters and there's a, well, there's a validity to it. For me, personally, I don't. I still support it, and I still help people do those things. I have Beltane tomorrow, for example, not really one I'm into. But the reason is because I'm not a farmer. I don't know how to farm wheat. Why am I celebrating a holiday that is about gathering grain or sacrificing animals for meat? I don't eat meat. I don't understand farming. So why am I following these things, right? And again, that renewal energy that you were talking about, it's totally a valid way to go about that, but most societies were like three or four major celebrations, not the standard eight. And even standard eight with the bond is even contested if that was a newer iteration sometime made around the 70s. There's a debate whether or not that's a modern practice or if it's an ancient practice. So even within the sabbat, that's those eight sabbats, there's a whole bunch of difficulties with those things. But that sabbat of witchcraft is the widest because of the church and school. Wicca. That was the first author I ever uh, read. Was it Joe Garland? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he work with Alistair Crowley? He was inspired a lot by his books. Yeah. Okay. A lot of people were inspired by Crowley. He <laughs> borrowed a lot from uh, Philemon and things like that. That's I think it was more than Don than Philemon. Because he did, yeah. did his own thing, he went with the whole Egyptian stuff, and then he borrowed very heavily from that source and that ceremonial yeah. magic and psalmonic magic and all that stuff. Then an element changed into Philema or felt nice. And then became the ICO. So, yes, contemporary witchcraft, I don't, myself personally, <laughs> media right now does not represent or reflect contemporary witches because contemporary witches fills a much wider niche mm -hmm. than is possible to be represented. And there's a lot of really deep, habituated sort of responses to what witches are and that sort of thing. In fact, X-Files, I watched the other day, there's one episode where he talks about the pentagram was a, is a positive symbol in the X-Files. And he was just like, yeah, the pentagram is actually a positive symbol. If it's aligned to this specific direction, though, this is generally where it's a negative thing. I was like, X-Files got it right. <laughs> they had to recant this because three seasons earlier they were like, oh, this is used by devil worshippers. So three seasons later after that, they re yeah, they, they reconned it. And I was like, nice job. Uh, yeah. Uh, societal Same. perceptions. Uh, the awareness stuff. I think that we're, yeah, what time are we at? Yeah, we're oh, 
cool. Yeah, they'll kick us out eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go into that part. Uh, homework, basically, right? Homework, yep. Homework? Homework. Homework. <laughs> Easy work. Easy There's work. A, he's, we're, we have a couple of different variations on this. Yeah, so I had a, a couple, and, and I just had a couple. Um, kind of on influencing perception in our surroundings and reality. Um, I have two drills that I really like to use, and one, um, I, I have a, a wording that I usually use with, because I use it in martial arts as well. I teach, uh, I teach neck fighting, and uh, Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. I remember, I remember. That's another name I like going by, is Lee. That's so cool. I need to study him more because I was fantastic, so. Beautiful. Um, so the, the, the words I usually use for martial arts students is a bit spicier than for, <laughs> for here. Um, yeah. But um, we, we, we'll call it a line of directness. And so we're going to try to travel on a line of directness. And so you can pick a path. I usually send people to like 16th Street. And because there's a lot of people, a lot of motion, a lot of movement. And the goal is to start maybe at one end by Jimmy John's and work, walk all the way down to the other side. And aside from traffic laws <laughs> and making sure you don't get by a car, because the cars don't count, they can't see you or hear you or feel you, um, you're going to walk to the other end without stopping. And you might have one or two people that are just facing away and can't see you or feel your presence coming. But I so far haven't had anybody tell me that they've had to ask somebody to move or step off track. You, with the purpose in mind of getting to the other side of the end of the road, people will feel you and move out of your way. If you are purposeful enough in your emotions and decide I'm going to get to the other end and people are going to move for me, then people will move for you. And so give that one a shot. The other one is uh, try to find some kind of a uh, store, or you can go to the grocery store, you can go to like a, you know, and say record store. People don't go to record stores anymore. Um, <laughs> some kind of a shop, uh, you know, thrift store, go to the mall, go to uh, park finals, whatever have you. And go, and go two different times. But go to the same spot. So if you go to the mall, try to go to the same stores in the mall that you go to. And I want you to try to go dressed in your nicest, like, I look bomb, let me like, photograph myself and send selfies to my friends, like, the best you can. Oh, thank you, Joe. Appreciate it. Of course. Of course. <laughs> And then also go on, like, I feel sick, I have a cold, I really don't want to leave the house type clothes. Like, it's a laundry day, this is the last thing I have. I'm almost, like, embarrassed to leave the house in these type of clothes. Half leisure. <laughs> right? Leisure clothes. <laughs> and, uh, and, and notice the difference of perception just based on your clothes, without you affecting change. So first, because I view witchcraft more as science, testing, and trial and error, so first you're going to go twice and figure out, okay, on base level, baseline, how is society going to view me different just based off of my clothes? Then do it again with purposed mental action. People are going to treat me the same no matter what I, what I wear. And you're going to intellectually and in your brain and using whatever kind of methods and spell that you have, cause people to pay better attention to you when you're in the lower, lower type of clothes, the more relaxed clothes and see if you can then in, which we'll go into Andrew's uh, next uh, homework, is see if you can get them to ignore you while you're dressed out mm -hmm. of this world. Yeah, uh, that's what I run into a lot. So this is a form of essentially glamour magic, if you will. Mm -hmm. So this is a practice of that and getting some idea behind what glamour magic looks like, you know, uh, representing yourself in a certain way. I look this way and I go to work looking like this and nobody does anything, they're just kind of like, I didn't expect that, and I'm just, whatever. So I went to Minneapolis uh, one time, uh, and I got off the plane, and I was going to do a, I was working on something, and I got to the airport, and I got off the, off the plane, and I started walking to the airport, and I realized everybody was staring at me. Keep in mind, I'm wearing my hat, I'm wearing like, my normal stuff, and I've got this giant bag, and I'm walking purposely through, and people are moving out of the way, but they were staring at me, and I went, wait a minute, why is everybody staring at me? I went, I look insane, I forgot. Because it's just I'm just used to looking this way all the time. So what I realized was that I just stopped, and I sat down and I did some meditation work, and I I basically worked on making myself as invisible as possible, and that worked because I stood up and started walking through the airport just like I was beforehand, 
and nobody was paying attention to me anymore. Nobody was looking my way at all. To the point where I was standing in line and somebody was literally, if this is me and I'm standing in line and there was another person that was in front of me, somebody just cut in line right in front of me, not even aware that I was present. I was like, okay, I might have gone a little far. <laughs> but that, you know, the diminishment or the lessening of the visibility of self is also similarly, I don't think that functionally became you know, see-through transparent, but it became so much quieter than the noise that was going around for those people in their minds, you know, what's going on in their daily life or whatever their travel is, they're really noisy. And the quieter that I am, the more I go under, unnoticed, right? And that unnoticed is really rather what I would prefer because I don't really want to cause, you know, this huge swath of people going, what is happening? That man is going somewhere. What's going on? Right? I don't need them to do that. I just need them to let me my thing on the left. Yeah, just like, and I do. I just walk around that way, and people just generally, if I remember, I generally am ignored. Mostly, I don't care. Um, so most of the time, I'll just walk out of my house and I don't try any of that. But I do realize that there's some social situations that I want to pull myself back a little bit, so that there's more air in the room for everybody else, and just be able to be in that observation spot. Um, in my own job, and they, you know, it references the therapy ghost, because I'm often in time, you know, in community with my clients, and I look this way, and they're like normal white family, right? And they're just hanging out being suburbian. 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 Yeah, and that's fine, but the thing is that I look this way, and I need to not interfere, so I pull myself back as far as I can to still service, serve the client that I'm there to serve as well as remain as innocuous as humanly possible. And largely, I'm just ignored, and people are like, is anybody else seeing this guy over here? It's just like, no, you just ignore him, it's fine. <laughs> so, right, yep. So, I kind of don't understand the second homework about going in well-dressed and then going in. You want to look at the perceptions. So you go into a store, let's just let's use the two of us, right? I look a little bit out of place, right? So if I go into one the, you know, let's say I go into Kohl's, for example. Wait, Kohl's doesn't exist. Don't still? Okay. Yeah. So Kohl's. So I go into Kohl's looking like this and see what people's reference is, what they, how they, how they yeah. perceive me, right? Versus what would happen if I dressed like Joe and went into the same store and see what their perception is then of me at that point. To see the difference of how you do that, and then we're even more downplay. Tank top and shorts and sweats or whatever. Right. So first, see if do people look at you more? Are people moving out of the way? Like, oh, that's a person's dressed straight. I don't want to be around that person. So first, see do people generally look at me different based off the two two types of dress? Mm -hmm. Then see if you can cause them to look at you different. Mm -hmm. In either of those situations, right? So if I if it's me dressed like this and I go in, I want to reduce myself and see how much I can reduce myself looking as outrageous as I do. Or do I want to increase that looking and dressing like this, right? And how can I get more attention that way, right? So the first step is to see what the difference is, then how can we change this and how can we play with that difference? And then see that it would be like going to uh, King Supers in going grocery shopping or whatever in a tux or you know a formal ball gown versus going to that place in, in a tracksuit. Way different, same person. And it's about kind of experimenting with that. But like, what is the, what in my, um, like what is the lesson here? Oh, to, to influence your surroundings. Mm -hmm. To influence how other people perceive you and how you can control that and how. So you can eventually, you'll have the self-realization of I want people to treat me this way. I want people to look at me this way. I want people to feel this way when they're around me. The self-manifestation, understanding what I can do for me, and it's not necessarily controlling other people. It's about the self and that self-manifestation to then understand how you will interface with that manifestation, your self-manifestation, your own power, right? Because that's what witches generally do. And these kind of assignments seem to provide the most and quickest response, mm -hmm. because especially with folks that are newer to reach witchcraft or maybe less familiar with how to implement it, maybe they're really well studied but haven't implemented or practiced it yet, the biggest thing is to see results. And so if you can see results as soon as possible, as quick as possible, 
then you can affect change better and implement it better in the future. Mm -hmm. And so these, the one of trying to get to the end and realizing that just my goal without talking to people or mentioning it or people knowing that my goal is to get there, they'll feel your need or desire to drive to get there for move. So you know that I can cause people to move for me and change for me. And that expands to not just that, but once you know that behavior can happen, how can you move communities or groups of people? Because you know that in a one-to-one -one sense from just you yourself moving forward on that path. They definitely the same thing. If they're viewing you different based off of your clothes, if you're in one part of town and they have a certain type of culture and sociology and then you go into a different part of town that has a different money value in that area, they might have a general hardwired perception to view you different. Mm -hmm. If you're in a community of you know million dollar houses that have you know four cars and they're all Mercedes and you dress down and you're in you know jeans, flip flops and a tank top, they're gonna view you way differently than if you had an Armani suit and a Rolex on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A really good view of that is when I was in the club, because I go I went to the goth club looking very similar to this. And upstairs they also have the like rap room. And I went up to the rap room, and nobody knew what to do with me. And then, like, I got into the, like, I got, I got into the, I got into the jive, right? Now I'm dancing, right? And then they started, like, a song came on that I knew and I could dance to. And so I started dancing, and they were just like, "Yo, this wizard can dance!" And I was like, and I just looked like this, and he was. They were losing their minds. They were just having a great time, and they did not know what to do with me. And I was just like, "See you guys!" So I just wandered off, and forever now. That room of people <laughs> knows there's this one random dude that just showed up looking like this and was just like, man, he can really move. <laughs> no explanation. And then I just never showed up again. How <laughs> shall there? Is that milk? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I love milk. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh. This one I think was actually I think it was the I think it was the church because it was the yeah, upstairs. upstairs. Like, yeah. Yeah, it was the, it was the we have church. Pretty big goth community here. So. Wow. Here in Denver. Yeah. Yes, it's really big. <laughs> so you know you can move through these spaces in very different ways, um, but I know that our library is going to close. Yes. So, uh, so is there any final thoughts? Thoughts, questions. I brought candy. I meant to give candy out to people answering questions, but everybody was answering questions, so just. Take candy. Take candy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate it. All the people that are online watching this, please feel free to comment. You know, hit that alarm bell, hit the like button, all that jazz would be Tell great. Tell on the Discord, please join the Discord. Yep, and don't forget your affiliation forms if you're going to hang out with Kirk a little more and do some more stuff to help us keep doing all the things that we do. And thanks again. Good. What's an affiliation form? If you want to kind of volunteer more, be, be more involved in helping out like, rather than just uh, you know, experience it the events. <laughs> See you, too. Bye. Elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, wrist.